Yo, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Hart for those of you that are new. And today we have a four game NBA slate here on DraftKings for Tuesday night. Let's get right into it. Hit that like button and subscribe. Do really appreciate all you guys' support. As I said, let's jump into this breakdown. So, for this first game here, Golden State versus Miami, obviously a slow paced matchup here. Not the best game environments, but there's a lot to like here from both sides, or I should say the Miami side, but Golden State, I do really like Steph here. Coming in at a very, very solid discount, 8.6. I know he's been up and down. I know his minutes have kind of been limited. Steve, Steve Kerr's an absolute idiot. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they need Steph. Right now, they're fighting for the last playing spot. They don't want that. Um, because no one wants to go against Denver if they do win out and get into the playoffs. Uh, so yeah, I expect them to you know kind of bump up Steph's minutes here. And I expect them for one of these games to go for 35, 40 plus real life points. So uh, I really like Steph here, even though it's not the best game environment at 8.6. In terms of the rest of the team here, they're an absolute nightmare DFS-wise. Uh, they're going to be playing at least eight people, if not nine, 10, or 11, depending on people getting foul trouble, who's playing good, who's playing bad, whatever it may be. It's an absolute headache. So I say for the rest of the team here, if you're looking for some ways to get different on this, you know, four games slate, especially if you want to get, you know, the 100K to first all by yourself, there's some options, right? Like green, 6.3. Should play around 30, you know, 30 minutes, maybe gets a few more. He definitely has triple double upside. As you can see, solid upside there. So I don't mind if you land on him. Um, Clay Thompson, obviously a little bit riskier than than Green. Similar minutes, but it's obviously he's gonna shoot the ball more. So it's like if he goes off, you know, hits five threes, maybe six or seven, who knows? Hasn't been shooting them too too well the past two games. But see as you see before that, he had what, three games in a row, five five threes each. 38, 41, 30 and a half fancy points, 5.7 K. So it's like, he's a strong way to get different on the slates. And same thing with, you know, Chris Paul, another very risky play here. Minutes are not the best, but as you can see, he has double, double upside. He went off for 40 and a half against Memphis, 24 minutes, not going to shoot the ball a ton at all. Probably going to be around that six to eight shot attempts per game mark. But you know, if other people hitting their shots, he gets to 10 double, double there, 5.2 definitely has upside there. That's really it. I don't think you need to get to anyone else here. Um, so there's options to get different, but really just sticking with Steph for me. For the Miami side here. So for Miami, big news right now is Jaime, Martin, and Love are all questionable. Even if they're in, it doesn't really change too much offensively here for Miami. Everything's going to be going through Jimmy and Bam. Now, obviously, Ty, excuse me, I was going to say Tyler. Terry Rozier is a really, really, really strong play as well. Should be that third scoring option alongside Jimmy and Bam. Should play, you know, mid 30s minutes. So I, I think he's really, really strong at 6.8. All three of them look really, really good. And then in terms of secondary guys, um, we know we could get a lot of value here for Miami. So it's like if one of these guys are in, they'd obviously be really good. And then if the rest are out, so then we could definitely look to Jovich, Highsmith, and Bryant, even Patty Mills, even Delon Wright. So there's a lot to like here because even with those guys in that last game, uh, Delon Wright played 30, uh, Thomas Bryant played 20. Obviously, it blew out, so they did extend these guys a little bit there in the second half. Uh, Highsmith did really well. He played 25. Uh, he had a really strong game there. Um, Jovic did the worst out of the group, so he'll probably be the lowest own, but he has a little bit of upside there. Um, and then Patty Mills, you know, 3.5K is pretty much only out there to shoot. Uh, but as you can see, if he hits a few shots, you know, he definitely can go for 15, 20 plus, 3.5K. Definitely helps out your lineup, so... It's kind of more wait and see approach to see who we like in terms of the value here, but there's a good amount to like for the Miami side, besides obviously the main three of Rozier, Jimmy, and Bam. Moving on to the Lakers here versus Milwaukee for the Lakers side, kind of a similar situation. Absolutely love LeBron and AD here in this matchup. Uh, really like getting to one of them here against Milwaukee. We know Milwaukee gives up a lot of points. Uh, in terms of the guards, I, I think Russell is kind of in Reeves. I, I prefer Russell, but I think they're kind of similar to like a clay to like a Dramon where, you know, they're not coming at the best price tag. He's all the way up to 7.2, but I mean, in competitive games, he should see mid thirties minutes closer to that. You know, sometimes he sees closer to 40 and we know he has that double, double upside there. So he's just a little bit more of expensive, like a Chris Paul, obviously a better shooter, uh, better score right now getting the more minutes, but yeah, 7.2 for him has that GPP upside. As you can see, he can go for 50 plus even alongside AD and LeBron. I think he's fine if you land on him. Otherwise, I don't have much interest in the rest of the team here besides obviously the two main stars. For Milwaukee, kind of similar situation where Giannis looks really good if you have the the value, if you, you trust the value to get up to him. 
Uh, Dame, kind of the same thing, you know, especially on this slate. I don't think many people are going to Dame, but we know all the upside with him. He's been playing better recently, so I like him a lot. If you're looking to get different with the spin up, I would assume Chris Middleton's probably going to be coming in as the highest zone of these bucks just because he's cheapest, 6.7. You know, he's kind of off his minutes a little, a little bit. Like, he's seen 30, you know, kind of low 30s minutes. And he's been very, very efficient. As you can see, 38 to 41 and a half, and then 43 fancy points. So, a good amount to like here for the Bucks. Obviously, Middleton looks the best. And then, in terms of, like, GPP upside, I'd rather go to Lopez over Portis. I know Portis has been better, you know, seen kind of better minutes, been more aggressive, double-double upside. But, you know, 5.4K for a guy like Brooke Lopez, who should be, uh, needed with his defense against Anthony Davis could see, you know, close to 30 minutes. Obviously if it's a few threes, gets a couple of rebounds. We know he has huge block upside. He can go for, you know, 30, 35 plus. So I don't mind taking a shot on him uh, there. If he's going to be coming at very low ownership. And then in terms of value, you could force in, you know, Pat Bev, Crowder and Connaughton, but they're not going to do too, too much there for you. We're down to this third game here, OKC versus Pelicans. OKC side, absolutely love the price tag here at SGA. does feel a little bit too cheap. In terms of the secondary, I think, you know, Jalen Williams and Chet are pretty strong plays in their secondary option. Uh, I'd rather go to Jalen Williams, but they're both there. They're both fine. In terms of other guys, I don't mind if you take a shot in Lou Dort. Another one of those, you know, GPP plays. Super, super risky, but he could definitely get you there if he hits a few shots at 4.2. Uh, so I don't mind him there. Otherwise, everyone else is... Kind of Kind of forced they're another one of those teams they kind of spread out all the minutes to kind of all these random bench players where it's like sure you can get lucky you can force them in but you're really playing um you know with fire here if you do land on one of these guys so i really just stick with kind of the main guy here if you want to get a little bit risky you can go to chat and jalen williams they're there but i think just stick with sga that's really it moving on to the pelicans here uh, Ingram obviously still out. So Zion nine, 9k does feel a little bit pricey, but he's been really, really consistent and solid recently. So I do think he'll be coming at pretty low ownership, but that's definitely a way to get different on the slate. Should see good minutes. And he's been very, very strong recently. CJ McCollum feels like the better option, the better answer. 7.3 minutes should tick up. The shot attempts should tick up. As you can see 21 and 18, the past two games there has really, really strong upside. The only risk there with him is that he can have those games where he goes like two of 15, very frustrating and absolutely, you know, bust your bracket or excuse me, your lineup. But 7.3 for him looks very, very strong here against OKC. They're going to need his scoring. Trey Murphy should get ownership. Another one of those guys who's going to be super, super aggressive has really, really strong upside, uh, especially with him going, you know, four of 11, one of 12. He still went for 30, pretty much back to back games. A lot to like there for him at 6.4K. Uh, pretty, pretty strong play. Should see a ton of ownership. I think Herb Jones would be a nice pivot play off of Trey Murphy. Not to shoot the ball um, a ton, but he does have that chance to hit a few threes. He's going to play a ton of minutes, and if he gets you know a couple blocks and steals, like at the beginning of the season, he's going to absolutely ham with those. He can go for 30-plus, so I think it's a really, really nice pivot play off of Trey Murphy, especially if Trey Murphy's ownership will probably be double or triple Herb Jones. Don't mind going him for lower ownership and a little bit more minutes. Jay Val, it's just not in play for me. They just really have limited his minutes. In terms of, you know, secondary options, some decent value. I don't mind, you know, going to Najee Marshall, as I always say. One of those guys plays, you know, high teens to low 20s minutes, and he can be super productive. Um, you know, I, I'd say he's guaranteed to get you at least 12 fancy points. Obviously, he can go for less than that, but he's usually pretty productive when he's out there. So 4.3, don't mind him. Larry Nance is priced down. I'm sure he'll be pretty popular as a value option. You know, 4.2K, you should see anywhere from 15 to 25 minutes. Uh, I think he's a strong play. And then same thing with Jose Alvarado. Another one of those guys, you know, should see some decent minutes off the bench. Uh, another value option at 4.1. So a lot to like here in terms of value. Uh, nothing like super, super strong as of right now. Uh, but as you can see with Miami, um, with the Pelicans, you know, there is some good value to like here on the slate. So for Dallas here, if you're really, really feeling good with the value, you can definitely pay up for Luka. Um I don't know if I'm going to go there, but he's been carrying ownership every single slate just because he's been going for 80 plus pretty much, or excuse me, 65, to like 75 every single game, triple double every single game. And he's still priced uh, too cheap there. So if you think that's going to happen against Sacramento, which he'll probably will, uh, Luca should be your guy. Uh, Kyrie, uh, you know, a strong pivot playoff of Luca has you know, really, really strong upside still 9.3 K kind of like a Dame Lillard play where everyone's going to go to Giannis. Everyone's going to go to Luca. But Dame and Kyrie Irving are really, really strong at their price tags. 
an offer away for you to get very different on the slate. Gafford, if you're going to play Luca, I'd say suggest probably playing Gafford because if Luca does very well, it means Gafford's going to be doing very well just because of that pick and roll game. As you can see, he's had strong upside. So at 6K, I think he's a solid play if you think, you know, if you're going to go with Luca. Rest of the team here, not much interest for me. And then moving on to the Sacramento side. Um, I do think there's a lot to like here on the slate. There's a lot, a lot of ways you can go in terms of spin ups. Every single spin up looks really, really good. Uh, really strong matchups for every single spin up and the slate as well. So for Sabonis, as we know, pretty much been a walking triple double. I think he's got a double double every single game uh, for like past 56 games in a row. Uh, so you're pretty, been pretty much guaranteed double double upside. And then obviously, if he gets a triple double, that's even more playing massive minutes, pretty much like 40 minutes a game. So hard not to really like him here in this matchup going against uh, Gafford and Lively. Fox, his price has come down. Still, he's putting up massive numbers. He's shooting the ball a ton. 8.8K, really, really good there. Um, I'm sure he'll be leaving those guards of like Kyrie and Dame in terms of ownership, but I think they all have similar upside there. Uh, they're all really, really strong plays. They're in that kind of lower tier of spend-ups. And then in terms of, you know, other plays I really like, Monk, I mean, he was, I, I forget his ownership. I think he was only like 5% owned in this game here. I've seen not the best matchup against Orlando, but I played him. 5% ownership. What does he do? As you can see, 22 minutes over 11, zero points. I, I mean, it's not like he was like, you know, 15, 20, 25% owned, 5% owned. That's what I get. It, it just, yeah. But in this matchup here against Dallas, absolutely love him at 6.5. And then Murray's kind of like a Clay Thompson. Like they'll see the minutes really just comes down to, can he hit shots? If he can, he can go for 35, 40 plus. Otherwise, not like he's going to kill you 5.9, but I'd rather just pay up 600 bucks more for a Milink Monk who doesn't see similar minutes unless he's doing really well. But even so, he's going to be way more aggressive, definitely more upside than uh, Murray there in less minutes. And he's only 600 bucks more. That's my thoughts there. And they have been starting Ellis alongside those guys. Men just kind of fluctuate. I would not expect this game here against Orlando. As you can see before that, not going to shoot the ball a ton, really just out there for his defense. And at 4.5K, Kind of priced out of value for me. There's other options you go to on the slate. Same thing with Harrison Barnes. Just think there's other options you can go to on the slate in terms of value. And that is the slate breakdown. So there's a lot to like here. In terms of value, I'd really just say, you know, wait to see what they do with Miami because that should open up some really, really strong value plays. And as I mentioned, uh, a lot to like there for the Pelicans in terms of pivot plays. And then uh, for Sacramento and Dallas, there's some solid plays. So I really like going a balanced build here just because I think you can fit a lot of you guys in between six and like nine K who all have really, really good and strong upside. So I think I might make one lineup where I go kind of more stars and scrubs, especially if the value in Miami opens up and then one more balance, just because there's a lot of guys on this slate, as I mentioned in the six to nine K range, uh, you know, from pretty much I'd say Gafford all the way up to Kyrie where, you know, any of these, any of these guys can easily go for 45, 50 plus if they have a strong game. So really like a uh, really, a really, really lot. I can't even talk a lot to like here for this slate. Hope you guys liked that video. Hit the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on Twitter tomorrow for some updates. Peace.